Hello, it's Duncan. Today we're going to take a break from our usual Kotlin and look at some old school hacking. Not the breaking into computers type hacking, but making cool use of technology hacking. So I'm taking this YouTube channel quite a bit more seriously, and that was a bumper. I didn't know what a bumper was before, but now I do. And I thought it would be cool to have one. But what would be even more cool would be to have a different set of anagrams every episode. Now that sounds like tedious and hard work, and tedious and hard work are what we have computers for. So today, we're going to create our minimum viable bumper generator. Now, sometimes I want to write software, and sometimes I just want to get a job done. And I think this is a place where I just want to get a job done. So we'll ask the internet for something to just do it for us. Okay, it looks like wordsmith.org. Well, that works. And we can see from the header that there are more interesting ways of doing things. What about finding the actual anagrams? Let's have a look. We've got lots of options. We can find anagrams of refactoring to Kotlin. We can say how many words we want. So we want at most three words. We could put words that must be in there or can't be in there. See what happens with that. That's nice and quick. Shows us an ad, but never mind. Okay, let's try one of those and plug it into our animation. Refraction King Lotto. We can specify the size. We might like some other font. And helpfully, we can say we'd like a GIF. And we can reduce the pause in the middle. Let's have a look at that. Okay, that's close enough. And we could save this thing to our desktop and use it as part of the video. So we have a two stage process. The first is generating the anagrams, and the second is generating an animated GIF from them. And of those, the second bit is the hard bit, I think, for us. So what we'd like to do is do whatever this page does. So if we go back, we'd like to be able to get the GIF that is the result of submitting this form. That way we can generate some anagrams and plug them in rather than having to type them in and paste them and so on over here. So let's use the developer tools to work out what this page does. Come here and we can look at the network and then click the button. And right at the top here will be the post. Here we are. So clicking the button causes a post to this animation.cgi. And we can look at what went. So we sent some cookies and some things, but in particular, the request sent a payload with the data from the form. We can see it here. So it looks like we might be able to send that data off to the server and get back a GIF, which would be perfect for us. So let's write some Kotlin to try and do that. Before we do, you may be able to hear from my fans that Firefox hates animated GIFs. So maybe we'll just have a little hack at getting rid of this. We can inspect and take out that GIF. Ah, that's better. Right, back to the network. And now let's bring up IntelliJ and create a new project. So we'll call this bumper generator. We'll do Kotlin, we'll use Gradle, we'll use Kotlin DSL, we'll use Java 15. Advanced settings, we'll just say that's com one eyed men. Okay, let's let that create a project. And now that it has, for these sort of things, I tend to just work in tests. So we'll create ourselves a new test because it's an easy way to run code. So we'll call this bumper tests. Now, somewhere to run the code. And just check that can run. Good. Now Java comes with a built-in HTTP client. It's a little bit weird, but let's see if we can work out how to use it. I think we've got a client, and if we're lucky, we'll have HTTP client. Okay. Can we build one of those? No, because it's an abstract class. Is there a builder for it? 
No. Is there a static method? Ah, oh, there is. So we can say we want a new HTTP client. Good. Now we want to make a request. Is there an HTTP request? There is. We can have a new builder on a URI. And what's the URI we want? Well, it's a URI create on the place we were going to post to. So let's go and look at that. And that is this URL. So we'll copy that, come back here and put that there. Now we want this to be a post and there's a post method and that posts to a something body publisher body publishers dot of string splendid and we could put our body in here don't have a body let's just get one body equals and we can go over here and say copy post data put that in there now what about headers the server will use headers to interpret this post so we'll add some of those as well header back to firefox again and we'll look at the request headers so we've got a bunch of accept content type that looks significant we've got some cookies if we're lucky we'll just get away with the content type so let's copy that go back here and put it in here and it's a type and a value okay armed with a request we should be able to say that our response is ask the client to send a request and we need to know how to handle the body when it comes back so body handlers of string so that'll convert it to a string for us don't know why this isn't happy ah because we're still a builder so we've got to say dot build and now let's just print our response and see what we get out of it run that this isn't really a test we're not making any assertions we're just using it's a convenient way of running some code okay so we can see that we've got a 200 but we don't know what the contents of the body is so let's say body which is a string run that again and here now is a body what i think i'm going to do now is take that and put it into a code editor so we can see it so let's take this here and create a new html file good now a nice trick is that we can then open that in firefox and see what happens well we're going to have trouble with that animated gif again so let's go back here and take that out and while we're here I suspect that we don't need to care about Google's tag manager. So we can get rid of that. And we don't need to care about ad serving. So we can get rid of that. Is there a little more irritation? Sure, we don't care about the top links. And then this, I suspect, is our title. Now, if we save that, IntelliJ has actually updated the page in place, which is really nice for us. But still no animation here. Let's go back to our page. And scrolling back up, we see we've got some JavaScript that wants to be loaded here. And we don't have that. So let's go and pull that off of the website rather than trying to load it from our own local so the path will be that. So I think if we went back here and put that path in here, 
then they might be loaded from the right place. Oh, and there we go. So we're now at least showing an anagram, but without the text that we thought we'd entered. So let's go back to our code and see what we can find. Here then is our script. That's what's being run. So let's just lay that out a little bit. And I think we can probably do reformat in here. And lo and behold, IntelliJ does the right thing. Uh, just before we go on, we could also get rid of this bottom links, I think. And some more Google Analytics. Leaving us with just the meat of what happens. So let's have a look. What happens is we build this input object and we pass it to animation with that object. So in fact, all the work is being done in JavaScript, not on the server. All the server has done when we post it to it is send back a page with the right JavaScript in it to generate. This has an input text of blank for some reason. So let's try fixing that by putting in some anagram and a little experimentation will show that they're separated in here by pipes. So let's try that. And if we save it, IntelliJ reloads the page and we are making progress. Back again, we seem to have some more unnecessary bits here. And if you look here, you can see this div is given an ID and that's been put in the JSON. And then that JSON is going to this animation function and the animation function will replace this div with the animation. Also lost in our post is this GIF animation here. We actually want to set that to one. So if we do, then we actually do get a GIF here so we could copy or we can just open the image in a new tab. There's our GIF. And that animates nicely. Okay, so now we have something of a plan, I think. If we could generate a page that looks like this, we could put an anagram in here, fiddle around with these parameters, load the page, and then just save the image from the page. Now, I don't know how to save the image from the page yet, but I do know how to generate a page that looks like this. So let's go on and do that. In order to do it, we're going to want this page to be as simple as possible. So let's just go through again and cut out anything we don't need. So we've got some form here we don't need. We've got a script here that's unused. We have some titles and some other pieces, which I don't suppose we need either. Try and get rid of those. So we're left with the core JavaScript in the head. Body that we don't care about, simplify as far as we can, a P that we don't need. Don't suppose we even need the block quote. So in the body, we have a div. We won't need a no script tag. We won't need the block quote. And if we save that, have a look. That's here, nice and simple and working. Okay, so how do we serve up a page that looks like this? Well, we could get all fancy and run up an HTTP server uh, with some sort of templating engine, or we can stay simple. And a really simple way is just to write it into the file system and open it. So if we were to take this body as is at the moment and say, copy that path and get that, and then say on the command line, what if we were to say, this is a Mac. So what if we were to say, open that file? What happens is Firefox, which is my default browser, opens the file, which is perfect. So let's write some code to write into the file system and then ask Firefox to open it. I think we're done with the tests here at the moment. So let's repurpose this test in order to say, runtime, get runtime, exec. 
And if we give it the path to a file and ask exec to run open, let's see whether that works. Oh, it does. That was very simple. Now, instead of this file, we want to generate one. So we'll give ourselves a temporary directory. We'll just say this is bumper. Now we'll give ourselves a body as a triple quoted string so that we can take the contents of this HTML and put it straight in there. Now we'll write that into our temp dir. That should give us, and we should be able to say, write the text of our body string. That will put a file somewhere. And now instead of opening this file, we will open our temporary file. See if that works. It does, and you can see that's written it somewhere random that will be cleared out when our Mac reboots with luck. Okay. Almost there. So now we need to substitute some sort of anagram in here rather than the fixed thing. So we had one lying around here, Refraction King Lotto. If I copy that, delete that. Now I can take this and put it in there. Then I can make this into a function. I can take this and make it a parameter of the function. And that then is passed in up there. So this can be our anagram. Test that. Ah, that's invalid. Why is that? Ah, we have our equals and we know that we needed a pipe. Should we be doing this test first? Maybe for the practice, but for one offs like this, we're programmers. And I think getting it working is good enough. There's a nice little trick we can play with IntelliJ here, which is to tell it that this string contains HTML. So I can say this is HTML and it will offer to annotate. There we go. And now we can reformat in here. We can edit whatever we want to do. And it is HTML aware inside the editor. We might, for example, want to change this to be 640 by 360. Let's test that. That will be slower. But there it is. Now I can just extract a function which takes the anagram and opens the browser. This is our production code. And obviously if I wanted to, I could write a program that just took this string from the command line and called this function. I'm a programmer and it's easy enough to run this thing up in IntelliJ and edit it. And super easy to edit any of the other parameters I want here. So change the font, change the size, test the steps and so on. So I think I'm going to leave this as it is and just run up IntelliJ every time I need it. Obviously also at some point, I'm going to want to wire this up to an actual anagram generator. But for now, I'm happy to look those up in a website and paste them into this program. So there we have it, probably the minimum viable anagram generator, or at least anagram renderer. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then the point of this code was to give the channel a little identity. And that's all about getting subscribers. So what you could do for me is to subscribe, because if you subscribe, then YouTube will know people are liking this content and serve it to more people. Thank you very much for watching.